If you can't afford to do it once, you can't afford to do it twice. So if you're thinking about starting a business, do not pass go. Do not collect $200 before you consider these five tips. Hello visionaries, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert, founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. So these days, entrepreneurship is the sexy thing to do. Everybody wants to turn their side hustle into a main hustle. But I'm here to tell you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, it costs to be the boss. I've seen major mistakes because people have not taken into account everything involved with starting a new business. And if you can't afford to do it once, you can't afford to do it twice. I think I can speak for all lawyers when I say it costs more to fix your problem than it does to do it right from the beginning. So if you're thinking about starting a business, do not pass go, do not collect $200 before you consider these five tips. Let's jump right into it. Number one, choose the proper business structure to meet your needs. Many startups begin either as sole proprietorships or partnerships and then restructure as they grow, which is a really good plan. Sometimes, however, it might be more advantageous to structure for your long term and then grow into your business. I have or will have several videos that break down these different types of entities that compare them, how are they similar, how are they different, and what the tax and legal implications are of each one. The important takeaway is that the LLC and the corporate business structures become separate entities from you as an individual. So they provide various tax and liability advantages that help you hold on to your money and protect your personal assets. Number two, use written agreements. It's 2022, and if you don't know by now that relying on the good old handshake and pressing the I believe button is not enough, you might deserve to get God. Stop entering into transactions and business agreements just because you and your potential business partner have been friends since you were kids. It doesn't matter. When it comes to business, all that matters is what's within the four corners of the document. Unfortunately, no matter how well you think you know a person, you should have a contract to protect you and your business because if it's not in writing, it does not exist. Number three, register for your business licenses and or permits. This is very straightforward. The bottom line is, if you're starting a business, you need to register for your business license. Even if it's a home-based business, you still need a business license. If you're selling something, make sure you register for your seller's permit. These licenses and permits usually are done through your city or your county. There might be state licenses and permits that you also need, so you should make sure to check into that or consult an attorney who can help you. Just don't skip this step. If you don't comply, you could be subject to penalties, liens, interest, suspension, closing your business, or even a lawsuit. It's not worth it. Number four, protect your intellectual property. I assume by now that most of us have at least heard of the term intellectual property or IP. If you haven't, there's no shame. I have several videos that discuss intellectual property, but basically your IP is your intangible property of the mind. There are four primary ways to protect your IP. That is through trademarks, copyrights, patents, and trade secrets. And I like to say the fifth one is through contracts. There are countless examples of the importance of protecting your intellectual property. 
Again, I have several videos on this already, so I'm not going to go back through it. I will just say, as a business owner, protecting your IP is critical. And number five, understand your finances, taxes, and deductions. A lot of new startups do not prioritize financial accounting. Why? Because many times entrepreneurs are bootstrapping. They're starting with low risk and low investment businesses. And usually when you don't start off making a profit, you don't even pay attention to the financial accounting. You're just trying to get your business off the ground and eventually become profitable. However, it is extremely, extremely important to track your finances. It doesn't have to be super savvy in the beginning. You can start with an Excel spreadsheet. There's so many software programs for accounting like QuickBooks. But commit to documenting your expenses and transactions at least once a week. This will also help you when it comes to tax season. People get all up in arms about Amazon and these other big companies not paying any taxes. But I say don't hate the player, hate the game, because that is the new realm of possibility when you become a business owner. I have a free ebook that lists 35 of the most commonly overlooked tax deductions for small business owners and self-employed individuals. Your deductible expenses can include office equipment, office supplies, wages that you pay to yourself and others, even a home office deduction. If you're looking for a bookkeeper and you don't know where to start, I've been using a wonderful service called Bench Accounting for years. And you can use my coupon code linked below to get one month free. As a business owner, you must keep well-maintained financial records so that you can accurately deduct those business expenses and lower your amount of taxes. Before I end this video, let's just recap. Number one, choose the proper business structure. Number two, use written agreements. Number three, register for your licenses or business permits. Number four, protect your IP. And number five, understand your financials, taxes, and deductions. If this video was helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments where you are on your entrepreneurial journey and if Talbert Law Office can help you with that. Until next week, this is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. I'll see you in the next video. I'ma keep it pushing, yeah